everybody, it's Jonathan Senor Smoke from the Ring of Fire in Westchester County, New York. I bid you welcome. It is March 31st, 2020, and I cannot wait for this month to end. I'm sure you all uh, share my thoughts on that. I want to just kick March in the ass so far out of my memory. In April, I'm here to embrace you. Um, it's going to be a better month. Um, still going to be bumpy and turbulent, I'm sure, but it's got to be better than the last several weeks. And on that note, let's get uh, turn the conversation over to Grills. And um, a question that I'm asked all the time is about grill cleaning. Um, and the bigger question beyond the grill cleaning is about prolonging the life of your grill. So grill cleaning is tied to prolonging the life of the grill. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And it doesn't matter whether you're using a gas grill, well, it's basic gas grill like a Weber, Napoleon, I, N1 like a Lynx, or a DCS, an Alfresco. If you're using a pizza oven, if you're using a pellet grill, a Kamado, it doesn't matter. The key to prolonging the life of your grill and to maximize its performance is simply put, you got to clean it. And what I want to do, we have, we have a grill cleaning service, so anybody out there who needs your grill cleaned locally in Westchester, please ping me at jonathan at curtos.com, and we'll take care of that for you. But I want to show you, particularly you pellet grill owners, I want to show you a video here. Um, as you can see what's going on here, the amount of smoke, there's no food in there, right? That's my Timberline 850. There is no food in there causing that. That is simply me. Having the grill set at 250 degrees and it's the ramp up to temperature and it's kicking off all that smoke, which that's actually nothing. I probably had double the amount of smoke coming out of there, which goes to show you that um, I have very patient neighbors, to say the least, uh, to deal with the nonsense that emanates from my yard at times. Um, but again, you know, somebody wrote into me when they saw this, they're like, oh, what were you burning, you know? Uh, half of a, a steer in there? No, there was no food in it. What there was, was residue. And the residue, particularly in the pellet grills, becomes a problem. Now your Traeger Timberline, and probably the Ironwoods, will send a, uh, there'll, be, there'll be a message on the control panel about cleaning the grill. What I do is, um, and, 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 and I'm not very fastidious about this, but I should be, you really should clean the pellet grills every few cooks. And cleaning the grill, um, what I do is I'll try to do a high heat burn in if possible. If that's causing too much smoke, then you got to turn the grill off. You got to scrape down your deflector plate, push everything from the grates to the deflector plate below. You got to push it all into the firebox. And then what I do is I take the trusty shop vac. The shop vac is absolutely elemental, instrumental in getting this done the right way. You have to clean out the firebox. You have to clean out, um, uh, all the components of the pellet grill within the barrel. Um, it's, it's of the utmost importance, and you will see a marked, marked difference in the performance of the grill, and you'll see a, um, a diminishing of that heavy gray, the, what I call the acrid smoke, which we don't want because that ruins the flavor of the food. We want that lighter blue smoke, which the Timberlines in particular are very good. Any barrel-shaped smoker with the downdraft system is going to do a great job in promoting blue smoke because the heavier, darker smoke will exit out the back. So once again, and you know, listen, on your pellets, you, I, I would honestly do it every two cooks if possible, depending on what you're making in there. In terms of your gas grills, um, I don't really think you need to shop vacuum. Um, what I do is I'll, do, as I'm cooking, when I plate everything and get it into the kitchen, I will continue keeping the grill on, will raise the temperature and really try to burn off any residue that I see in the grates. I might even spray with a little canola oil, do a nice scrape down and let it disintegrate. If you have an infrared sear burner, that's going to do the job for you. It will incinerate any debris residue that may be on at the grill grate level. But, um, I can't implore you guys enough about cleaning the grills, keeping them covered, but, uh, and keeping them covered does only so much. I'm actually, I don't do that that often, but the inside of the grill needs to be cleaned for performance and for longevity. 
But anyway, that's it. I'm trying to keep these videos very short, very pithy uh, moving forward as we, um, uh, we deal with pandemic and self-quarantine growing. Um, there'll be some more videos uh, rolling up. But grill season is going to begin in the Northeast very soon. I, took, I, I keep looking five days out, and we're getting our consecutive 60-day degree weather next week. The grills will be going. And again, to my pellet grill audience out there, clean it vacuum it out do the right thing um because you don't want to have to see my face again and buying another grill even though i'm always going to greet you here with a smile folks thank you call me if need be jonathan at curtis.com 914-793-5600 i hope you and your family are safe and uh let's uh, be safe keep growing that's the mantra